plastic flowers, plastic plants, silk flowers. It's about a billion dollar industry. You ever wonder who buys that crap? It's my dad. My dad. My dad, every year, holiday season, instead of giving fruitcake or perishable beautiful flowers, would send plastic flowers to all the secretaries in town. No, it was not a Tiger Woods kind of thing. It was that he knew a big secret, which is that the secretaries had all of the power, about $15 billion worth of power. Think about it. Who booked your travel here? Who books your food? Who orders your office supplies? Secretaries. Secretaries. Now, I came to understand that they are a quietly powerful group of people because of my Dress for Success experience, but I'm sort of sensing that the secretary sort of feminist line might not work on this crowd. Can you cue the music, please? You're going to have to sing with me. Dun, dun, dun. and you think Darth Vader. In fact, I'm willing to guess that like half of you were Darth Vader at one point for Halloween. <laughs> Some of you might think Luke. And there's a guy over there who's definitely thinking about Leia. <laughs> Thank you. But actually, I think of the stormtroopers. The stormtroopers. Those are the people who actually made those revolutions. Because it's all movements are actually led by the people in the middle. So we heard earlier about Martin Luther King. What if Martin Luther King had given that famous speech at home, in the shower, to a bar of soap? History would be a little bit different. What if the Berlin Wall, when the first person climbed on it and started chipping away, if a hundred other college students pissed off, didn't climb onto the wall with him and chip the way a wall with him? That first guy would have been arrested and thrown in jail and that would have been the end of it. But thousands of other people climbed on too. At Do Something, we love the presidents but we also like the vice presidents and the followers, because that's the bulk of the movement. So what I want to talk about today is our obsession, and I love that I get to do this in Silicon Valley, with entrepreneurship and leadership. We are obsessed with leaders. Google CEO and 34 million items pop up. Google COO, and you don't even have 4 million items pop up. And there's something really wrong about referring to them as the number two. Because those of you with kids know what number two refers to. <laughs> Have we gone too far with our obsession with leadership and entrepreneurship? Three reasons, three, three byproducts of this obsession that I think are not too pretty. One, resource allocation. We spend on Jedi training. We pluck Padawans up and we give them awards and titles and special programs and even in public schools so that we spend all of this money and time and energy and accolades on the talented, not even the tenth, the one percent, when meanwhile, most of the work is done by the less educated and the less celebrated. That's a problem. Second of all, there is an unbelievable amount of pressure to be at the top. And I think that's been breeding a lot of unhappiness and improductivity. Go to any Starbucks, especially in this neighborhood, and you will find dozens of kids hunched over laptops, searching for an idea. I've got to start something. What do you want to do when you graduate? I'm going to be an entrepreneur. That's like me saying I'm going to be famous. I mean, I'm, I'm going to, that, that's not a job category. And it's something that you're actually supposed to fall into because there's a real market niche that you're looking to fill. Not because you're looking for a line in your obituary or you're looking for a legacy. Have we lost sight of happiness? Have we lost sight of impact? Have we lost sight of productivity, all in the name of glory? And the third byproduct of this obsession is felt most acutely in the NGO space, social change. And that's because we are now obsessed with new, and I think at the expense of impact. We have been told that social entrepreneurs are going to change the world. Impact is going to change the world. Actually having a difference, changing something is what really matters, not whether or not you've created something new. We don't need another new cancer organization. We need the 300 cancer organizations to learn how to work together. Somehow, I founded blah, 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 has become sexier than that's my Lamborghini parked out front. So I'm in agreement that the world needs leaders. I, I love leaders. I, I think leaders are awesome. But I want to give 
you permission to join something. That's my first point. My second point is I want to give you permission to separate impact from scale. And I know that's like heresy to say in this town. But scale is not necessarily your religion, especially where social change is concerned. It ought to be impact. And the third thing is right here, right now, I want to create a new vernacular. Something that's an alternative to leader, that's not follower, which seems derogatory. Something that's not number two. Or president, vice president, I think that's literally bad president. And I don't want to really be called anything associated with Cheney. <laughs> middle, middle man, middle management, middle of the road, middling. So I'd like to coin a new term today. Viva la secretary. Yeah, thank you. I know it's after lunch. Viva the stormtrooper. Viva the doer. Come on, say it with me. Viva the doer. I'd like to create a new culture of doers. It starts right now. Thanks.